SmackDown was in Charlotte, North Carolina. He started the show off with a segment that ended up being very controversial on social media. He had several people playing the race card. WWE's racist, Vince McMahon's racist. They took this title shot away from Kofi Kingston. When in reality, these people are complete morons. If you don't understand wrestling and you clearly have an agenda, you probably shouldn't be watching. Because if you've been watching wrestling for longer than about, what, a year, two years maybe, you understand how WWE books stuff. When If there's a baby face that the fans are behind, what they will do is they'll screw over the baby face with authority to get the fans more over and to think that someone's holding them back and to get them more over. And that's exactly what they're doing with Kofi Kingston. This is really good for Kofi. I think Kofi Kingston is going to get a WrestleMania match with Daniel Bryan, and I think he's probably going to get the belt at WrestleMania. I really think they're heading in that direction. They're going to get the fans so behind Kofi Kingston it is going to get really hot by WrestleMania time if they're able to uh, contain the uh, continued momentum to WrestleMania. When he beats Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania, it's going to be an amazing pop. It's going to be an amazing moment. It's going to be the highlight of his career. They're going to go all the way with this guy. And it just angers me. I understand when WWE just doesn't listen to its fans because the fans are fucking morons. These few idiots ruin it for everyone else. I don't think these are the majority, but these are a vocal minority. These are the dumbest wrestling fans. The same ones who send Charlotte Flair all these horrible messages on social media when they can't realize that the WWE is trying to get Becky Lynch over. They're trying to get Kofi over. Getting Becky over. This is what they're doing. I can't believe how stupid they were. Some of the things they're saying to Charlotte. It's like, can't you realize WWE is getting behind Becky Lynch or trying to get her more over for WrestleMania until she gets the big spot? You really think she's not going to be in the fucking match? You really think they're going to do this with Kofi Kingston and not give him a title shot at WrestleMania? You guys are so fucking stupid. I hate these fucking fans. They're the dumbest motherfuckers. Anyway, you had a contract signing with uh, Daniel Bryan and Kofi Kingston. Vince McMahon interrupts and he says uh, Kofi won't be getting the title shot against Daniel Bryan. It's going to be Kevin Owens. Owens comes out. Looks like he lost some weight. He's got some new tattoos, some really good tattoo work on his right arm. And uh, Daniel Bryan is just sitting there. He's sitting in a leather chair, which was funny. Stephanie actually ribbed him. That was actually funny. And... Um, He's pissed off, and you hear Biggie and Xavier just yelling. They're screaming, what the fuck? Like, they're not cursing, but they're yelling. They're really pissed off. I was thinking, holy shit, don't do it. Don't do it. They're going to play the race card. They're going to play the race card. They didn't do it. So we go backstage and show uh, Kevin Owens with uh, Shane McMahon and Stephanie McMahon. He says he's not uh, involved, and he wants to team with Kofi Kingston. They make a match with Kofi later tonight. It's Daniel Bryan and Rowan against Kofi and KO. So next we have Shane Cesaro out, and their opponents are the Hardy Boys, which is a shock, which was like, what? The Hardy Boys are back? I thought Matt Hardy was done with the company's contract right now, but I guess he was working everybody. Uh, was, you know, wrestlers always do on social media. So I guess the Hardys will stay. This probably is their last run. You know, I wouldn't mind seeing them against Gargano and Ciampa at WrestleMania, maybe against Ricochet and Black. I don't know what they're going to do with the tag shows, but I assume at WrestleMania we're going to get a tag team ladder match or a TLC match. I think that's where we're going, but... Hardys get the victory here. They uh they beat Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy. Or uh, they beat the bar. So in the backstage, we show uh, Alistair Black and Rich- Ricochet. I guess they're a tag team now, which I think Black is much better as a single star. It's so same thing with Ricochet. I think they'll be better as single stars. I don't think they should be a tag team. I guess if it's just temporary, it's fine. Lana comes there, and uh, Lana's looking great, by the way. And uh, she's saying, you know, she's ripping into both of them. She doesn't know what the fuss is about. And then uh, Ricochet says they beat the tag titles. And then uh, Black cuts a pretty average promo. I didn't like it too much. I, I just I don't think Black should be talking too much. I, I like him as this devil worshiper. I, don't, I, think, I think they're humanizing a bit too much for me. But it was a fine segment to set up a match for tonight with uh, Black and uh, Ricochet against um, Nakamura and Rusev. Our truth is out with Carmella. And they do the dance break. And uh, they... Um, when they come back, and before they came back, actually, I should mention, they did the an official Hall of Fame induction, the second Hall of Fame induction. It's taking so long to get to these, but the second official inductee will be the Honky Tonk Man, which had some people angry. Some people don't like him. Some people don't think he deserves it. I think, I mean, the guy was a great character. He was very colorful. He was an asshole. He was a great heel. His title reign was fucking brutal, but he was a great heel. Um, he got a lot of people angry. He wasn't a good wrestler at all. But, I mean, as a character, he was excellent. I don't see what the problem is. I mean, some people don't like him on shoot interviews. don't like him as a person. That's different. But deserving, I mean, come on. Look who's in the Hall of Fame. Some of these guys are nowhere near as big of a star as he was. He definitely deserves to be. I don't think there's any question about it. I don't know why it's uh, even debated that he should be in the Hall of Fame or not. He's really worthy. 
So they show R Truth um, uh, cutting a promo with uh, Carmella, and he does the U.S. Open Challenge. He wants to tribute it to John Cena. I hope we don't see R Truth and John Cena at WrestleMania. We might for the U.S. title. You never know. That'd be like a, they maybe really do that as a like a thank you to R Truth. Like, you'll lose, but I mean it'd be a cool moment. I guess just to, uh, a good retirement match. If he's going to retire, that'd be a way to retire. But it's an open challenge, and Almas comes out with Zelina Vega. And uh, as they go to the ring, Rey Mysterio jumps Almas. He beats him down. He runs in the ring, and then it's uh, it turns into like a brawl. Almas gets in the ring, and eventually, Truth uh, says he wants to make John Cena proud. He makes a triple threat match. So for the U.S. title, um, our Truth retains it. I think he'll lose the title soon, probably at fast. And I mean, they might give it to him or something. If they're going to do a multi-man match, a multi-man ladder match instead of a tag match. Then I guess you can just keep it on him and have him lose the title at WrestleMania. But he, he, he's not. His days are numbered. We know he's not going to get a long reign. After the match, Alma speeds down Ray. Uh, Ray hits. Uh, um, he is able to reverse. So he hits a six one nine and he lays him out in uh, Alma and Vega retreat. So I love. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Zelina Vega. I've been pitching this for a while. What if Zelina Vega turns on Andrade Almas? Let's say she goes with her husband Alistair Black. They have a feud and she turns on Almas and she aligns herself with her husband. Alistair and she has a great look she has really uh, dark hair and uh, she like I think she fit Black's character like uh, you know the devil worshipping stuff like that I think she'd work really well and especially if she can wear that letter my god she is just a, she's absolutely gorgeous one of the sexiest women they have but I think uh, her if she did that that'd be cool and you know all this I don't know if people know you know his woman in, is Charlotte Flair so he's also a lucky man let's say they can even have a feud if they ever wanted to do that. Maybe not right now, but if they want to do that in the, in the future, you can have uh, Alistair Black and Zelina against Charlotte and Andrade if they were ever going to do that since they're, uh, they're an item. Charlotte's out. Um, she's praising Vince McMahon uh, for removing Kofi like he did Becky. It's like the fans are so stupid. I don't like this with Kofi because they're doing the same thing with Becky. They did this with Daniel Bryan five years ago, and they're doing this. They can do the same story with Becky Lynch five years later. That's fine, but I, I don't know if they like Kofi and Becky having the same moment. I don't know if I'm a big fan of that. I'm starting to get the sense I wouldn't be shocked if Charlotte gets, gets to win the match or something. At first, it was taking Becky all the way. I wouldn't be surprised if it's Charlotte. A few years ago, it was Charlotte, Becky, and Sasha. Everyone thought Sasha's going to win. Sasha's going to win. It's a lock. As the show got near, you know what? They're going to give it to Charlotte. Charlotte's doing really good on promos. It wouldn't shock if they wanted to get a lot of heat on Charlotte. She might win this match. And they may think, all right, we'll save it for Becky. And Becky never gets the belt. And then someone else gets it. Vince finds a new toy. Don't be surprised if Charlotte gets the win over Becky. It wouldn't shock me. But long promo. Fans don't like her. She's the top heel. It was in Charlotte. And she wasn't even getting that good uh, reaction. Also... Good idea, not having Becky Lynch here, mainly because it's Charlotte, North Carolina, if that's her hometown. I think she'd probably be cheered over Becky, even though I don't think Becky would be booed. There is a chance, however, if she was going to get booed, it's probably better just not to even have Becky show up. It's like having a face and a heel, have a match in the heel's hometown, is just a recipe for disaster. It's not something you ever want to book. So um, next we have uh, Tang at. You have Black and Ricochet against Rusev and uh, Nakamura. Uh, it's a surprise of no one. Uh, Alistair Black and Ricochet win. Alistair Black hits um, a black mask on Nakamura, who I'm surprised is still with the company. So him and uh, Ricochet get the victory. I guess they're going to be pushed as a top tag team. No, uh, we didn't see Gargano and Ciampa here. So I think they're just going to... Because I, I don't want to give away spoilers, but for the NXT TakeOver card, it's clearly they're going to build up to Ciampa and Gargano for the title. And it's clearly, I don't know if Black and Ricochet are going to have a match. I think they're participating in the, uh, the Dusty Classic tag match, but they won't be a main event. So we may as well leave them on the main roster and let Ciampa and Gargano just completely focus on NXT before they come up. We may as well de- de- debut on uh, the Raw after Mania or the SmackDown after Mania. AJ Styles in the back, is in the back. He puts over Roman Reigns. He's happy to hear the news. Um, he's talk. Uh, he says he's in a current slump in smack, which is kind of awkward. I don't think he's doing that bad. He was being interviewed by one of the women. Um, and uh, he uh, cuts a decent promo, and then Randy Orton comes out, and then uh, he just mocks him. So we're going to that match at WrestleMania. We're going to get AJ Styles, Randy Orton. I thought it would be for the title, because I kept thinking AJ's going to get the belt again to set up a title match, but... 
I, I, I kind of think that would have been the bigger match for the title because they haven't really had a huge program on a pay-per-view. And I think for a title, that'd be a, a worthy title match. But if they're just going to have a singles match, they can just like open the show or be earlier on the show. It'd be a hot match to start the show off. But I, I think them having a match would be a bigger match than Daniel Bryan's match because I think Daniel Bryan and Kofi isn't... I don't know. I guess it's a fine... It's a cool moment for Kofi, but I don't know if... Uh, I, I think maybe AJ and Randy would have been a bigger title match Lacey Evans comes out she walks around and hopefully she walks out of the company so I know I, look her gimmick's the worst gimmick in the company right now it's like she doesn't have to be like that she has a great background she was a marine why can't her gimmick be that you know how respected she would be I think you know Vince McMahon as big of a uh, supporter of the troops as anyone huge supporter of the military vince does the tribute to the troops every year he why why doesn't he see her that way why does he want to do this fucking 1940s 1950s stupid shit why is he doing this she can do well in that i think the fans would respect her and get behind her so they show out roman reigns and segment on raw just an amazing comment really great for roman happy's back and we get to the main event we get Kofi Kingston and Kevin Owens against Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan. We have a long match here. Um, so there's a story I have to tell. Kevin Owens reportedly went to Stone Cold Steve Austin and asked him permission to use the stunner as his new finisher now. I guess he's not going to use the pop-up power bomb. Austin gave him his blessing, so uh, Kevin Owens is a lot more respectful to Steve Austin than uh, John Cena was. So obviously, John Cena uh, was doing that springboard stunner like four years ago, and it looked absolutely horrific it was just the ugliest worst move in the company i remember he'd have these great matches when he was doing the u.s open challenge and then he'd ru- hit that stunner and it ruined the match and hit the a that was just the worst uh finisher it looked so bad that fucking wor- that springboard stunner looked like absolute shit but owens is using the stunner now he hits a finisher on daniel Bryan, which i don't like i think they're pinning daniel bryan too much now he's doing way too many jobs i know they have to get kevin owens over he just returned that's the match we're going with but owens and kinks and win there, there's obvious tension there i don't know if they'll do a triple threat at fast lane or they do a triple threat at mania but it's clearly we're gonna get daniel bryan and uh kofi kingston's gonna get his title shot it depends on how, where they get there but I, I think i really think we're going to daniel bryan and kofi kingston at wrestlemania so all these idiots yelling at WWE, calling them racist, just be patient. This is where they're going. It's like the same people who are mad about Becky. Give them time. They'll get there. I'm sounding like a WWE show, but you know what? Enjoy the journey. Let it play out. Accept long-term booking. Enjoy the story. It's like it's a long TV show. Let it play out. We're not at the finale yet. It's like these guys want the finale every week. The finale is WrestleMania. If the finale sucks, you can blame them there. Just let it, let them get to where they're going to be able to. We're going to see eventually. Sometimes you just have to be patient. And I think if we're patient here, Kofi Kingston will get his major victory at WrestleMania. And I think Becky probably will too. So, you know, I, I feel like the fans should just... I don't want to say just shut up, but... In this situation, maybe it's best to just enjoy the journey. 